Welcome to Introduction to Mobile Antennas. So Alex suggested, um, why don't we do something like a, a, a newbie night, El, uh, an Elmer night. So what is an Elmer, for those people who don't know? It's a mentor. We suspect that the very first ham radio mentor over 100 years ago was, was named Elmer. So it became a tradition. Like, you, you know, you, you get yourself an Elmer. So that's the best thing you can do is when you get your license, join a club and you latch on to people. In fact, you announce, I just got my license and I don't know anything, and people will just jump all over you. So the best thing you can do is come here, and especially tonight for new, brand new hams or, or non-hams. So congratulations, you, this is bullseye, you, 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 hit, you, you hit the mark, and you too. So, um, so what we're going to do is talk about a basic use of VHF and UHF radio. So I brought in some antennas. Ken brought in his antennas. If there's overlap, so what? Antennas are antennas. And then David's also agreed to be part of our uh, distinguished panel. So thank you. So I brought in my antennas. Uh, so I was wondering, let me do this historically as opposed to from the smallest antenna to the biggest antenna. So to, historically, this is the purchase history. So, oh boy, let's see, 1984. Yeah, was, so my graduation present to myself was to buy a, um, a, du a two meter HD handy talkie, or handheld transceiver, or what we call a handy talkie, and an amplifier, Tokyo high power amplifier, and this thing. So this is a 5 8 wavelength antenna. And I can tell you anecdotally, is that when I traveled in the west, I could go like 200 miles away with this thing. It was amazing using, what did I have? Uh, well, I guess my mobile radio, this 50 watt radio. So this has. Was that the single side band, Dave, or was No, no, this is FM. So this is vanilla FM with a repeater directory. So all new hams has, will have one of these. There's something to be said about paper. You don't need an internet connection to look something up. Okay? And for us, the people in my generation, they have this. Uh, Bound, large, tight, so two sizes, pocket size and usable size. So this is a magnetic mount antenna. <coughs> the base is a Larson, a magnetic mount, and this is something called an NMO. I think Motorola invented this uh, connector, is that correct? Yeah, okay. So and Motorola invents it and everybody else standardizes on it, pretty much. And this is a magnetic uh, place right here and it goes on a car. And uh, so what I've done, I got tired of fiddling with, um, with the, the PL259. I finally learned that after all these decades, PL259 is the male and the female is called SO239. So I just had, I replaced the connector with a BNC and I think it's going to be called a bayonet mount. We put it in, quarter turn, a loss. It's great, it's a great connector. So that's what I, so this is my main, uh, this is what I use for the car all the time. And in this area, I never use an amplifier. I have, well, um, I use this, it's two meters, and I'm going to be further away. And does anybody know what this is for? Safety. Safety, oh, that's the answer. Find it in the parking lot. Find your car in a parking lot. <laughs> uh, I couldn't think of that. I couldn't put a cork on here. And it's got a little bit of a knot, but this is visible. You don't want to poke someone's eye out, so that's a safety <laughs> question. So um, this has a loading coil on the bottom, and this is actually, I think this, this is a little bit shorter than 5 8 but th there's a magic coil. To me, antennas are magic. When you build them and they work, wow, you're a magician. But it, I just buy antennas, and they work. So this is one antenna. This is my very first antenna. But you know what, speaking about this, I might as well pick up this guy. This is a, a diamond antenna. The two brands, the good brands that I like are diamond and common. Um, and they're, not, they're a little bit more expensive, but you get what you pay for. So this screws on to here. This is what I use around town. And notice I got my safety cork on top. So that really is a point. You know, you'd rather be poked in the eye with a cork, preferably a rounded cork, this is a square cork. 
and this screws on. You have to be careful with the NMO mount. You, you don't want to misthread it. So you have to be kind of feel it. And there it is. So that's what I use. Now what's interesting about this antenna, this doesn't need a ground plane. This does. This is the 5 8 wave and then the quarter wave, as, as Ken mentioned. But this works great. You can just put it on a table, a plastic table, and it works great. Now how do I know this? I have an instrument called an antenna analyzer. It's act and it's two devices in one. It's, um, it's a tiny little transmitter, and it's designed with so little power that if the, the antenna is poor or non-existent or short circuit, it won't self-destruct. It's very little bit of power. And then it's got various meters. Uh, and we'll actually we'll demonstrate that when I go through my antennas. We'll actually find the resident frequency for that antenna if there is one. And I bet we won't find one on that because I have experience with that. You want to do it now? Okay, I got it in my hand. Okay. So can we hang it up so you're not touching it? Okay. You said it was a little power. No, 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 because he'll detune it, you know. Your body going to insulator. Okay, fine. That works. So 21 megahertz? No. So let's uh well, it'll be somewhere is around 147. Okay, so um so this device is an MFJ, it's the best thing I ever bought. It wasn't cheap because this is dual band. It goes from four megahertz all the way up to UHF mean four forty. It's the best thing I ever bought. Um, so I'm on 146 row, uh, and I read greater than 31. So I'm going to kind of sweep, sweep it around, tune this thing, and... Maybe it doesn't resonate. Maybe it's, this seems like an open circuit to me. Dave, why don't you get a little farther away from Okay. Whoa, 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 whoa. Okay. Yeah. This should be a safe hobby. I don't know. I can't find anything. I bet you have an open circuit in here. Maybe it's, maybe it's the connector. It's always the simplest problem. Yeah, of course. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, I didn't, I didn't do the quarter turn. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Were you I, I think William was a, a Motorola salesman or customer service person for decades. You know about these things. It's the phone question. Is it plugged in? <laughs> well, yeah. OK, now we're up to four. I said, you know, it was reading 31 as the VOR, and that was a happy accident. That wasn't deliberate, but I should have made it deliberate. Next time I'll make it deliberate. So we're reading 4 to 1, and let's sweep around. Okay, 4. So the lowest I'll get is about 4. 4. And 142. SWR or what? SWR 4. 4 to 1. I wouldn't use it. The rule of thumb is no worse than three to one, but I'm, but I'm picky. It's got to be two to one. But well, if it's an emergency, your hand talker's not going to fry. No. You still get the signal. No. No. So uh, this is another antenna. This is actually a dual band antenna. It's a diamond antenna. Uh, it works pretty well. Um, uh, I think it's, it's a little shorter than a quarter wavelength. But it's, it's got a loading coil here. It works on two bands. And this is better than a rubber duck antenna. And so why, is it, why are rubber duck antennas so important? Because they're flexible and you poke someone, you don't hurt anybody with that. And if the repeater is like nearby, it's good enough. Okay. So I have this antenna. And this came with an SMA connector, and SMA connectors are crappy. So I have an adapter with a rubber gasket to a BNC connector over here. And then later on, I finish talking. When David's finished talking, you can come up and look at this stuff and see quick connect. But it's important to give it the quarter turn, otherwise you have an open circuit. Okay, so what else do I have here? Uh, ah, my favorite antenna in the shack. This is called a dummy load, dummy antenna. All it is is a 50 ohm resistor uh, inside a metal can. And if you're testing radios, or what I like to do is to have my radios talk to each other in the same room. And I don't want them to radiate all this power, so I use these dummy antennas. At this close proximity, they are they leak a little bit, so they work just a little bit. And 
But for testing purposes, they also have an SWR meter. So remember I talked about the antenna analyzer? This is really two instruments in one, a tiny little transmitter and an SWR meter. And here's a big one here. And I like this. This is called a dual meter. It's got two meters. And one of them shows the forward power, and the other one shows reflected power. So you want to have maximum forward power and minimum reflected power. And inside, and, and there's a scale here where it's calibrated, where the two needles intersect, shows gives you the value of the SWR. And you don't need it, in, you know, decimal fraction. This happens. This is the digital instrument, so you can read it in decimal fraction. Actually, this reads in digital, and also you can read the SWR analog. Simple to use. Now, um, so the other day I was invited to go use the Ashton repeater, which is in Silver Spring, and I simply couldn't get out with this radio. So what did I do? I put this antenna on. And this is a nice antenna. It costs about $50 or $40. It's called a Prime. P-R-Y-M-E, uh, dual band antenna, and it's got a loading coil over here and a coil over here. So it's actually similar in construction to that, similar, or rather electrically, it's similar to that. And by golly, Ashton just came booming in, no problem, I was able to make talk to people on the repeater. So uh, for your HT, you want a better antenna, you have this, and you don't need a tiger tail, uh, because it's the nature of the antenna. Now. Speaking about tiger tails, I didn't do any measurements, but I can tell you anecdotally, I'm a believer of tiger tails. Well, that's it for now. Thank you so much for joining us. And thanks to David, W2LNX, David N3ADE, and Ken, K3YEE, for that terrific presentation. To find out about future Mark Club presentations, please visit our website. Bye for now.